Great. Uh, actually, that's great. Ooh, hello. You're good? I guess we can get started because we don't know if the storm has kept people away or if they're just late. Um, so welcome everyone. We were a little afraid when we saw that hail coming. Um, but I, my biggest um, thought when that happened was that Emma Moxley, our speaker, was scheduled to speak in May of 2020. And we had to cancel that. So finally, we're getting Emma back, and I think uh, she has so much more to tell us tonight. So um, I'm Doris Rankin, and I am uh, one of the organizers for the Community Speaker Series. Um, we have um, uh, members of the three churches and the Pakenham Civitan Club that put this uh, series together. And uh, we want people to know that if they have any um, ideas for speakers or something you'd like to hear about to get in touch with one of our members. We have Joan Gillen here and Bonnie McFarlane was too scared to come out in the storm. <laughs> and uh, oh, there's Dave. He has a meeting. He's going to a meeting later. So, And this is being taped. So if you uh, enjoy it, you can look it up after a few days on the church's uh, YouTube station or channel and uh, look at it again. And they have the two previous presentations that were, re well, the, the first one I missed, but I watched it on YouTube. It was Peter Sally, Sally? Sale. Sale, sorry. Um, and it was fascinating because he's a, um, a professor who does uh, research with coral reefs, fascinating. And our second speaker was Robert Gardner speaking about um, the history of Pakenham. So both of those are on there already, so you can go home tonight and dig in. So um, tonight, though, we have the privilege of having Emma, finally. Um, and I don't know if you know Emma, but Emma is a local Pakenham um, resident. And she is an independent travel advisor. And uh, she joined Travel Professionals International. I'm sure she'll discuss all these connections she has. Um, but she's an independent travel advisor. And she joined them in 2015. But before that, she had a 20-year career in the high-tech industry. And um, well, you don't, I guess she don't, didn't go far with the tech industry. But she loves to travel. So she decided to, to take this on as her. Uh, next or second or third career probably. And she's recently returned from Italy and escorted two groups to Turkey in the fall. And I know she's going someplace else in a few months too. So you should have your own YouTube channel. <laughs> anyway, so we'll welcome Emma and uh, I'm so glad we could have you. Thanks, Doris, and thank you everybody for braving that brief blizzard we had tonight and coming out here to hear my presentation. I decided to wear my bird tights because it's actually spring or it's going to be spring soon, so just, you know, let's get through the next couple of days. And <laughs> the robins are in my yard, I don't know about yours, <laughs> but they're here. Um, so, yeah, we just got back from Italy. We had 12 gorgeous days abroad, and in the fall, I escorted two groups to Turkey. These are trips that have been planned, oh my goodness, for two years, two, three years now. Cancelled, rebooked, cancelled again, <laughs> rebooked. So they were long-awaited trips, and it was fantastic to finally get out there and see where things are at in the terms of the travel industry. I assume you're all here because you like to travel, you want to travel, maybe you have plans to travel. And I wanted to just chat with people about what it's like now because things are different than they were back before 2020. And um, as a travel advisor, a professional in this industry, my job is to make it easy and a seamless experience for people. So that's why I'm here tonight, is to just kind of take you through the ropes on what to expect on your next trip 
And let's keep it really informal. Ask questions. If I'm going to be covering it later on in the presentation, I'll let you know. But just shoot out the questions and, and let's have fun. So this is actually, just to point out, this is Tuscany in the background here. We had a little day trip from Rome, and I said to Mark, we've got to go back and just have another little peek at Tuscany. And it just reminded me how much we love it, and we'll be, we'll be going back again another day. <laughs> so just to uh, reiterate, I've been in Pakenham, gosh, Mark, 23 years, 24? 24 now, 24 years. I live just outside of Pakenham. We're on the Carbine Road. And we've had uh, two kids that have grown up here in Pakenham, gone to school in Almont. They've now flown the coop. And they're off at university. And uh, we just love it here. We love the community. We, you know, it's, it's really nice to come home. We like to travel, but we like to come home. <laughs> you know what, you're here too. Um, so tonight, what I'm going to do is talk about what travel is like in a COVID world, because it's still there, and we just have to figure out how to navigate with it. It's not going anywhere. Um, I have the three Ps I want to talk about, project, plan, and prepare, and I'm going to cover those off in my presentation. I'm going to talk about travel insurance, because it's something that's really important and as a licensed travel advisor in Ontario, I have to make sure that everybody knows about it, is aware about it, and I offer, I offer it as a, a, a package deal with your trip. And just what it's like to work with a travel professional. If you've never worked with one before, um, I'm here to just tell you what you can expect. And if it's not me um, you end up working with, I'm affiliated with 800 travel professionals across Canada. So if what you want to do isn't in my wheelhouse, I know somebody who, who could help you out, I'm sure. So I'm just going to, I've got some notes on my paper here, so I'm going to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Just to sort of back up a little bit about um, myself and as a travel advisor, an independent travel advisor, to sell travel in Ontario, you need to be affiliated with a TICO office. And so I joined Travel Professionals International. They're my head office that is sort of like an umbrella company, and they allow individuals to sell travel under their umbrella. They have an office in Ontario, and I'm affiliated with that office. So that's sort of, in a nutshell, how it works in the industry. Um, but we're all independent, we work with our own clients, we go out and, and, and find clients, and it's, it's a basically an independent business that I run. So we're going to flash forward to 2023. And what's kind of interesting, <laughs> I did this presentation a year ago at the Almont Library. <laughs> so I had a little sneak peek at what I said a year ago, and it was quite different than what I'm saying tonight. There's some similarities, but things have evolved and progressed and gotten a lot easier, so that's a good thing. One thing that uh, the Globe and Mail said today, they had an article saying that fully customized trips are on the rise. Travelers are taking bucket list trips, and they're leaning towards personalized travel experience. So I'm already seeing this now. I'm getting a lot of requests for pe from people saying, this has been on my list for a couple of years now. It's a big one. Can you help me with it? I want it to be really special. Those are the things that are happening now. People are not waiting, and, and they're moving. So travel is back full force. <laughs> so just a couple of things to recap. March 13th. 2020, a day we will never forget. <laughs> in the industry, it was a nightmare, right? An advisory came out from the government, that's it. Everything changed on a dime. I had clients in New Zealand, I had my parents in Malaga, Spain, and it was all about, oh my goodness, how are we gonna get them home? Borders were closing, it was, it was bad. I don't wanna dredge all that up, but it taught us as travel professionals that we have to think about everything. Think about, is there a risk with this, with what my clients want to do? How do we mitigate that risk? How do we plan for it? And just, it, it taught us a lot. So in a way, it was unfortunate, but 
we take, we've taken what we learned from that experience and we just move forward. So people are traveling again. Restrictions have lifted. Borders have opened. Not all borders, but, and, and there are some, some little catches and I'll talk about that later. But the travel industry is recovering, but it is still recovering. So to give you an example, there's not a lot of direct flights out of Ottawa. I hate to tell you that, but it's true. You either have to fly through Montreal, or you have to fly through Toronto, or you drive to either of those places if you're looking for a direct flight. That's just the way it is, and hopefully it will get better. But right now, that's where we're at. Air France is launching a direct flight from Ottawa to Paris in June. That's the first one that's been announced. Um, flights are full, like they're really full. I, when we went to Italy, my cousin traveled with us, and she's an Air Canada travel uh, flight attendant. So the way she travels, it's my worst nightmare, she, she travels on standby. And she goes and researches the flights, and she goes and looks at the loads. All of the options were oversold. All of them. So there was, and that's what, that's what airlines do, right? They oversell because people don't make their connections, they don't show up, they don't want to move half-empty planes. So if you think that you can book something last minute, you'll be out of luck. And just to say, COVID is still out there. People are still getting sick. So, you know, if you've got a trip coming up, like we did before we went to Italy, I had a mask on for a week, wherever, everywhere I went, because I thought, this has been in the books for three years. I'm not getting sick now. So um, let's talk about projecting in the future. So think about your bucket list destinations. What are they? Are they, some, are they things like Galapagos, where it's very difficult to get into, or Machu Picchu, where they only sell so many entrances a day? If there's some really um, hard to reach places, you need to be thinking in advance of, OK, we need to give ourselves lots of time to get there because a lot of people are going to those spots. Like, I'll give you an example, river cruises. They were canceled for two years in a row. These boats are only 170 passengers. So they've been rebooked to the next year, rebooked to the next year. They are full. If somebody said to me, I wanted to go on a river cruise in September, I'd be hard pressed to find availability. So that's, that's where we're at. When to travel. We used to say, oh, try to travel on the off seasons. And there are still some off seasons, but was, what was really, really shocking to us was March in Rome. It was packed. It, there were so many people. And I thought, this is March. And I spoke to a couple guides, and they said, April 1 is high season for us. And I, I was, I was kind of shocked, because I thought, I thought it wasn't until like June 1st, but no, people are flooding back. And just out of, uh, out of interest, I was reading another article today. The number two, or the two number, the two top European cities are Italy and Greece right now for the next six to eight months. They're just, everybody's flooding to those two countries. <laughs> The other places that are really hot are Australia and New Zealand. And part of the reason for that is because those borders were closed the longest. They, I can't remember the exact date they reopened, but they were the two countries that were one of the, la the last two countries to reopen their borders. So the other thing I want to talk about is global warming. It's, it is having a bit of an impact on, on travel, right? Rivers are low. Last summer, we saw a record, level, um, uh, a, a record level drought in Europe, which impacted the river cruise industry. The year before that was a number of forest fires out west, which impacted um, Rocky Mountaineer rail line. I don't know if you're familiar with that, across in Western Canada. So there was a lot of cancellations. And so there's, there's some things that you need. As a travel professional, I look at, I look at these things, and I try to kind of plan out and say, OK, that might not be the best time to go. I might propose something else. Um, and yeah, more than ever before, pl plan in advance. If somebody 
comes to me and says, oh, I'm planning on going to this bucket list destination in 10 months from now. That's music to my ears. Love that. That gives me lots of time. And it offers my, I can offer my client a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of availability. Uh, I had one client come to me in May of last year, and she was looking to do a rail passage journey from Sydney, Australia to Perth. And it's on this beautiful um, rail line called the Indian Pacific Rail. And there was one cabin left. That was for January of 2023. She came to me in May of 2022. So it just goes to show you like there's some things that you've got to really project out. Anyway, and, and budget. I'm noticing prices have really risen um, on all fronts. So just tuck away a, little, a few more dollars because meals are more. There's service charges in restaurants that I never used to see. Um, the indus all industries are trying to recover from COVID. So just be prepared for that. That, by the way, is a picture of me on hiking the path of the gods on the Amalfi Coast. That was the trip we just did. It was incredible. It was a three and a half hour hike. And it was the hike that didn't kill us, but it was actually the 2,000 steps climbing down after the three and a half hour hike that just about did us in. <laughs> So where do I find information? As, um, as a travel professional, I look for travel advisories, I look for safety and security in destinations for my clients, I look at what the entry and exit requirements are, I look at health, do you need a, a yellow fever vaccine to go to Ecuador? Um, laws and culture, natural disasters, all this stuff are things that I research. And these are a couple of really great websites to remember, jot down, or if you want to look for information, travel.gc.ca. You can enter any country in there and hit the go button, and it'll tell you everything about that country. It's a wonderful site. Air Canada. They have a great travel-ready hub. So if you go to research a flight, it'll say travel-ready at the top. And it'll ask you, are you vaccinated or are you not vaccinated? Where are you, where are you coming from? Where are you going? And it'll, it'll pop up all the information you need. It used to be quite complicated. You used to need some countries required health forms, proof of vaccination, COVID tests. All of that has really come down. Um, but it is still good to check because there are some countries out there where you still need to have proof of vaccination. Does anybody know one country where you need to show proof of vaccination? The US. They have not lifted that. So that, that is surprising to some people. You know, and, 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 and me too, right? Like everywhere else has dropped it, but the US hasn't. Um, TICO. TICO is um, the travel industry um, consortium and it protects consumers. You may have heard of it. It's a wonderful site and it talks about why you should work with uh, a TICO travel agent um, or a TICO office, a travel office. Um, it basically, it means that uh, consumers have some protection. If a company or supplier goes bankrupt or whatever, there's some protection there. If you have a complaint, you can, you can file a complaint. If you go book travel with somebody off of the web from whatever country, you don't have that protection. But working with a TICO certified travel agent, you do. So that's important to understand. I'm behind on all my little papers here. Just a second. There's a picture of the travel.gc.ca site. You may recognize it. It also has information on there about the Arrive Can app, which I'll talk about in a little bit. It also shows you if there's a country that has a level four avoid all travel, 
that's important to understand what that means. So that can be, um, that can be related to a natural disaster. It can be related to political unrest in a country, or it can be re related to a health reason. And if there's a level four advisory, it's important to understand that if you decide to travel, your travel insurance can void any claim. They can say, no, nope, the government warned you and you decided to go anyway, you're on your own. So it's important to understand that. That was, that was important during the COVID years because there was still a level four for a long time and it prevented people from being able to go anywhere and have medical coverage. This is the Air Canada website, how to prepare for travel. And you see number one there, view entry and testing requirements. And just below that, that's where you would enter in. You're coming from this country, you're going to that country. What do I need? It's all there. And this is just a map of where we're at today in terms of countries and their restrictions to get into. The peach color, you still need to show your proof of vaccination, the US being one of them there. The dark green is you're good to go. No, no restrictions at all. And the light yellow is there, is there could be some restrictions. Every country's a little different. Could be just showing um, a proof of a negative test. They're all different. You have to read each individual country. So we get to plan now. Planning, I'm a planner. <laughs> Travel agents are planners. If there's any loose ends, we don't like them. <laughs> we don't like surprises. So that's, <laughs> yeah, well, good surprises. We like good surprises, but you know, we don't want to be caught off guard. I don't want somebody to say, Emma, my dream was to go to Galleria Borghese, and guess what? There is no tickets available. <laughs> that's what we saw in Italy. Tickets were sold out. The Colosseum, Pantheon, here, there were none available. You couldn't just walk up and buy your ticket. So that's why we need to plan. If there's, if there's things you really want to do, I need to know what they are, and I make sure you can get to them. So that's, that's why I suggest, if you've never worked with a, tra a travel professional before, this is what we offer. Um, last minute requests, they're challenging. They're challenging for us because there's just so little availability. Um, and it can become very costly to you. So tr try to avoid those if you can. And avoid the multi-hop. I, I chatted about us not having direct flights from Ottawa. But you know what? The drive to Montreal was a breeze. It was an absolute breeze. Left the car there, got home. We were back in Pakenham before we knew it. It was, it was easy. Uh, and consider taking carry-on. Carry-on is, is, you can do it. You can do it. Although I have to confess, I didn't do it on this last trip. It was all about the shoes. I had a really hard time with weather and the shoes. <laughs> but, but we had one flight, so it was okay. If you're gonna do carry-on, look at the airline's requirements for size, weight, everything. They, they are measuring things, they are weighing them because the airlines, or the plane, planes are so full. So if every, imagine if everybody takes a carry-on, there's only so much overhead bin space. So they're very picky about that and they will ask you to check it if it's over the weight restriction. And if you're carrying on and you're gonna hop around on Ryanair, for example, on a separate ticket, you need to make sure you know what Ryanair's carry-on restrictions are, because it could, it could vary, and, and it often does vary from Air Canada. So know your destination's entry requirements. Does anybody, is anyone familiar with New Zealand? E-visas are required for New Zealand. So that's something you need to do ahead of time. It's very easy to do, and you can do it through your phone, but you need to have an e-visa done before entering New Zealand. And plan out all the details, at least think about them. So I'm gonna tell you a little funny story. I told you I was a planner, right? Well, sometimes in this business, on the last, I, we, I got to planning our trip really late. <laughs> Okay. Well, at least it was done a couple of years ago. So when I got to the details, I said to Mark, why does my Air Canada app say, make plans for parking in Montreal Airport? 
there's construction going on. I said, how serious can this be, right? So I start looking, researching. And normally what I do for all my clients is I um, go and get them a park and fly pass at the airport when they're going to leave their car there. And it's a discount voucher. And I put in the dates that they're arriving, they're coming back, the times, and they get a, it's like a 20, 30% discount a voucher. You print out a piece of paper, it has a code, they wave it when they go out of the gate and they pay a reduced rate. So I thought, well, I'll just go get ourselves a park and fly pass. So I put in our dates, sold out. I'm like, that's never happened before. So I go to the Montreal airport website because they, they have a different system and they operate their parking you know, separately from the park and fly. And I start to look, all of the lots were sold out. I'm like, this could be a problem. <laughs> so Mark says, well, I have Marriott points. We'll just look at a Marriott hotel and see if we can leave our car there. We'll go in a night before and we'll leave our car there. I said, great idea. Give them a call. There's how many, like, how many Marriott's in Montreal? Four or five? All of them sold out. So I'm, and now I'm starting to panic a little bit. <laughs> but I said, you know, why do I feel like I've done this before, Mark? So I pull up, we have a, I, everything that I do for my clients, including ourselves, I put in a travel app. So I pull up our travel app, Amalfi Coast, and I start looking through it. Under the information and documents section is my park and fly pass that I did four months ago. I couldn't remember doing it. So we were okay. We had parking, but it was the last spot <laughs> when we got there. So this is what I mean by planning. We're planners. I, I don't sleep at night if I haven't got all these little details figured out. Anyway, this is uh, just to reiterate, have paper copies of everything. I put everything in an electronic travel app, but I'm also a paper girl too, and I'm trying to move away, but I don't know. I don't know if I ever will. This is what I give to each one of my clients. I have the itinerary, all their travel insurance documents, the park and fly pass, your little baggie for your liquids, everything's there. So you get both. You get the mobile app and you get the paper. I'm going to get to that. Um, I do suggest um, photocopying your passports and leaving them with somebody at home. Uh, it's, you know, if something happens and they get stolen or whatever, it's nice to know, you know, if you have them in your email, that's good. You can access them or if you leave them with one of your kids or a friend, then you know there's a backup somewhere and you can go to a consulate office and say, my number is this. Bring your medications with you in your carry-on and it's advised to keep them in your prescription bottles. Don't take them out and repack them. Some countries are fussy about that and they want to know what meds they are and that they belong to you. And bring your COVID emergency kit. You know, if you're going to get sick in destination, have all the best things for cleaning your sinuses and sore throats. Just have your little med kit with you. And I would suggest consider wearing a mask on your plane in confined areas. We, I, I decided that we, as soon as I stepped foot in the airport, I was going to have one on on my way over there. I had one on in the plane, took it off while we ate our meal, but then fell asleep with it back on. And once we were on the ground in Europe, not very many people had masks on. And we were outside. I felt a little bit better about that. But in confined spaces, the air aircrafts, they don't mandate it. It's encouraged, but it's not mandatory. And hand sanitize. I think that was the last bullet there. I, I made a point of doing that a lot before every meal because I just thought, oh, I should do that. And the last P is prepare. So as a travel professional, we give you the, we give you the tools to have peace of mind um, in your travel experience and make it really calm and easy. And you know, you shouldn't go into a vacation stressed out. <laughs> it's not what we want. We want you to have everything you need to just have a wonderful time. Because you know what? We all need a vacation. And we haven't had one in a few years, right? So that's, that's our job, is to help make it um, as easy as possible. 
I'm going to talk about travel insurance more in detail in the next slide, but I'll talk about the differences between emergency medical and hospital insurance and trip cancellation and interruption insurance and OHIP coverage. So a lot of people don't know this, but OHIP coverage will only give you a very small amount of coverage, even out of province. So um, for example, uh, if you needed to call an ambulance when you're in BC, you will have to pay for that. OHIP doesn't cover an ambulance pickup. So just, just understand that, because like, you can buy a travel insurance policy within can like for travel within Canada outside of your province and it's not very expensive so you know if you if you've got some concerns about that it's it's something that you can do and carry with you um, yeah and just destination preparedness know know something about the culture where you're going the language the local currency where to get money this was actually interesting I, uh, in Italy, um, I learned that doing a conversion over there is not the thing to do. They, have a, they charge a 17% fee for doing that. So the best thing to do is either take out the euro here at the bank, have a little bit of cash on you, or when you're over there, use a bank machine at a bank, not one of the side street ATMs. You'll, if, you, if you do that, you'll notice on the side streets, you'll see these ATM charges and they'll say, they'll give you a horrible exchange rate. But if you go to the bank machine, they'll give you a much better exchange rate. And they'll say they'll charge um, a fee, a transaction fee of like three euros, which is typical. That's what you should expect. So just something to keep in mind. Irma, yes? Would you be able to use your Visa card for your money? Everywhere absolutely everywhere and on that there's a lot of um, different cards out there that you can investigate and there's there's one called home trust which doesn't charge any foreign transaction fees because most visas most credit cards they have a foreign transaction fee added on and there's some cards that don't so you may want to just investigate that as an option oh. Home Trust. There's another card that I need to look into that I heard about. It's called WISE, W-Y-S-E. And it's, it's kind of interesting because you can use it for multiple different currencies and not pay a uh, foreign transaction fee. And you load that car, card with money and use it in destination. I haven't I haven't got it yet, but I have friends that use it, and they say it's it's quite good. How readily accepted are these things? I mean, we know Visa, Mastercard, kind of stuff. Probably yeah, they're they're used. It's the Home Trust is just like a Visa. It's 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 used all over the place. Yeah, yeah. What's your view on cash? Cash is is good. I don't like it's so. Funny enough, actually, we used a lot more cash than I anticipated. And the reason for that is a cappuccino, a gelato. They kind of frown on running a Visa card for small purchases like that because they pay an exorbitant fee at their end when they have to run somebody's card. So they, they kind of give you a dirty look and say, you know, do you have cash? So it's good to have a little bit of cash on hand um, and also for gratuities too. Um, they suggest if you're gonna give a tip and Italy is, every country is different. You should research what the tipping um, protocol is wherever you're going. But a lot of places they recommend you leave the tip in cash for the server. If you add it to your visa bill, often the server will never see it. It goes to the restaurant. So it's something to think about. And same thing, like for guides, if you're gonna do a tour, bus tour, whatever, it's nice to have a few euros just to be able to give the guides a tip. And then I'm gonna talk about travel apps and the mobile world that we live in. So before I jump to that, let's go back to travel insurance. Travel insurance, um, there's a few different forms, right? There's the emergency medical health, there's the trip cancellation and interruption, and there's the combination of the two, the all-inclusive plan. You can get um, 
a multi-year, uh, multi-trip policy. If you're doing many trips throughout the year, you can get a multi-trip. Um, you can also get a COVID-19 um, add-on rider. It's kind of, if you get COVID in destination right now, because there's no travel advisory for COVID, it falls under an illness. So your regular emergency medical health insurance will cover you if you have to be hospitalized, okay? The COVID policy is if you needed to be, if you needed to stay in destination. Let's say you're really sick, you can't come home, you need to stay an extra seven days in a hotel, that COVID policy will cover 150 bucks a day for your hotel expense. Um, again, I'm gonna flip to my pages because I know I've forgotten a few things. Just wanted to mention one thing about, about insurance. So a lot of, a lo I hear a lot, oh, I've got insurance. I've got it, I've got it on my credit card. So I encourage you to go find your policy and read it and make sure you really understand it. And if you don't understand it, call them. Because I've had people say to me, well, I've got trip cancellation for $10,000 of coverage. And I said, really, what card is that with? Because I, I know a lot of the different cards and their coverage. And I think, you know, you need to look at the, the actual wording in your policy. So she sent it to me. And it said $1,500 per person up to a max of $10,000. So there was three of them going on that trip. How much coverage does she have? $4,500, not 10000 so I just wanted to point that out to her. I said, you've actually only got 4,500. So you can either top it up and you can call your credit card provider and ask them to top you up to cover the full amount of your trip or I offer top ups too through Allianz. So just make sure you really understand what you have because I, in 2020 I had a lot of people relying on their credit card coverage and they were disappointed. They didn't get what they thought they they would get. Yeah, they so they uh, actually work together behind the scenes. So when if you ever had to do a claim and you had an insurance policy through me and you had another one through work, when you did your claim, it'll ask you, Art, do you have any other coverage? And you would list the other coverage you have, the policy number, and then behind the scenes, the insurance companies work together. Yeah, that's what happens. Ah, so mobile world. This is my background, right? 20 years in the high tech. I'm a little bit of a geek at heart. So I'm, I, you know, as much as it freaks me out a little bit, it's okay, it's okay, I'm here to help this stuff is actually making things a lot easier. You know, there's some hiccups along the way and the apps are getting better. ArriveCan was a, was a beast when it first came out, but it's, it's actually, it's a lot better now. So maybe what I'll do is I'll start with communications abroad. People often say, you know, how is this gonna work? My Rogers offers a $15 a day roaming. <laughs> package. Yay, that's pretty yeah, stiff. Um, 16 yep, 16 with Virgin Mobile. How about $12, how about $8 US for two weeks? How's that sound? Sign you up? Okay, well, I'll talk about that. So let's just go back a little bit about Wi-Fi and how we can just turn our phones off, put them on airplane mode, turn our Wi-Fi on and just pick up Wi-Fi wherever we go. We can do that, right? You can, most of the hotels, they offer free Wi-Fi. Restaurants offer free Wi-Fi. If you're cool with that, that works. Um, I, we use WhatsApp as a communication tool and I set up group chats with my family or friends when I'm abroad, so just to keep in touch. We can do phone calls through WhatsApp, you can do video calls, you can do text messages. So WhatsApp is a great Wi-Fi communication tool. That's uh, the little green one, it's a second row over. 
Um, so you've got a SIM in your card. You can go to the, when you get off the plane, and you land in the airport, there's always a cell kiosk somewhere. And they're more than happy to sell you a physical SIM card for their country at whatever the price is that they offer for whatever data package it is. You can do that. Bring your little tool in to pop out your local SIM, put in your new country SIM, away you go. That works. The price ranges, though, for that, right? It's a lot, it's more expensive. The next, the next one that I want to talk about is Air Allo, which I just discovered. It's an electronic SIM. So you write down Air Allo and do a little homework and look at the website. They've got fantastic YouTube channels on how it works. But basically, some phones offer the ability to store a second SIM card digitally. So if your phone is, if you're able to do that, you can, you can uh, set up an Air Allo account with your email and you can go to the country you're traveling with, pick the package you want, and you can buy that local eSIM. You can download it, put it in the second eSIM slot and call it your travel SIM. And then when you get into destination, you turn your local Rogers one off and you turn the new one on. I'm, I'm, there's, there's a few more steps there, but that's basically what you're doing. You just need to see whether your phone is capable of, of allowing that. And the Air Allo support is fantastic. I emailed them a couple times because I was having difficulty. They got back to me right away. They were great. The other thing that was kind of nice, I loved it so much. The people I was traveling with, I was like, hey, I can send you a referral code. And so I would just email them a little referral code from my app. They would get it they would get a $3 credit on their account and I would get a $3 credit. So I was like, this is, this is awesome. So I'm telling everybody about this. If you want it, just send me an email and I'll shoot you a, an Air Allo referral code and you can play around with it. Yes. It does have to be unlocked, it does. So that is a caveat for, for the physical SIM and the eSIM as well. It needs to be unlocked. So there are, and it, and it does talk about what your phone needs to be capable of. So yeah, have a look at the website and, and watch the YouTube channels. So the Arrive Can app. Back when we needed to prove that we were negative or we had a COVID vaccine and we, you know, to get back into Canada, this, that's when this was launched. It's gotten a lot better. And you can set this up ahead of time. You download the app, you create an account with your email, and when you've got it on your phone, you can um, take a picture of your passport. It captures all the details. If you're traveling with your partner, capture their details. You add the number of travelers you're traveling with. And then 72 hours before you come back to Canada, you complete the app, and it's like doing an advanced declaration of what you're bringing back into the country. How much booze are you bringing in? Cigarettes, firearms, $10,000 cash. Answer those questions, and it's, it'll say, thank you very much. And you come back to the airport, you land, you go into, you'll walk into the customs area, and you'll see all those little kiosks. You go up to the kiosk, you put your passport down on the scanner, It'll scan it, the camera will come down, take a picture of you, and then it'll say, oh, we see you've handed in your declaration. Is there anything you wanna change? Nope. Prints out a receipt, you're done. You walk up to the passport officer, you give them the, the, the here's the customs officer, and you give them the receipt and explain why you're bringing 250 grams of pecorino cheese back into the country. You don't have to do it. it. It makes it much faster to get through customs. If you don't do it, all you have to do is stand at that kiosk and answer all those questions. So it's up to you. Yeah, you don't have to do it. Sorry? If the machines are working, yes. Um, oh, and the airline apps. So the airline apps are also getting better. 
There's a little video I want to play you. Laura, you can help me. So Air Canada is launching something in Toronto and Vancouver. Just to, I wanted to show it to you because this is where the technology is going. This is in order to make it easy walking through the airport so you don't have to dig out your passport every two seconds and show it to somebody. That's okay. offered in Toronto and Vancouver now. Let's see how it goes. Who's you guys are going too friendly. She just stood in front of the camera. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the way you do that is you you about checking luggage. Is that your question? So um, you go up to to the well wherever you're checking in. You'll have your, you can do your mobile check-in and it'll ask you how many bags you're checking. One, two. It'll spit out the bag receipt. Yeah, she, you do it yourself now. Yeah, you do it yourself. And then the biggest challenge is getting that silly thing stuck the right way, right? And remember to take that little sticky tab with you because that's your proof of your bag, right? And then you take it over to the baggage carousel. There's always people, there's usually people around to help you because that is the biggest challenge, is getting that sticky thing around. Well, it was difficult. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did, yeah. I said to Mark, our bag, it's actually going. Oh, where's it going? It's gone. <laughs> but it, it, it worked. It worked. Okay. So this is uh, just a little bit of, about the air aloe. I just wanted to show you what it looked like. So you can go in after you've created your account and it asks you what country you're traveling to and it shows you the different Mamma Mia eSIM cards that you can download. So mine was the two gig for eight US dollars. It worked. Yeah. The eSIM, it's, it, was, it was to allow me to basically use my phone um, wherever. I didn't have to rely on being in a Wi-Fi hotel. I, I had service wherever I was in Italy. Well, it depends what area you're in, right? Because, well, sure. Do they, do they, the question was, do they have that for cruise ships? That's a great question because I guess it depends what countries you're traveling in, right? Yeah, I'm not sure I, if you would have to pick up multiple ones. I would think you would because you, it'd be like you're roaming into a different country, right? So you'd probably have to get a couple of different ones and just flip to the next one. Yeah, try that. And they don't cover it. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I, I haven't tried it on a on a cruise ship in Europe, so I'm not sure. But you know what? I bet you the I bet you the Air Allo website will have some information on that. Yeah. Let me know. Hmm? Yeah, you the boat? Yeah, the cruise ship does. You pay for it, though. I it, well, I don't know if it's free. I think every cruise line's different. I think you have to pay for it. Um, so I talked about the returning to Canada. And just a little bit about what clients are saying. You know, it's, uh, I, I provide my clients with a two-page checklist. It's a bit long, and, but thorough. it's thorough. <laughs> Start 
start early, right? But it's a little reminder of everything you should be thinking about. Um, yeah, I had another client say to me, uh, just try to make it as easy as possible in terms of flights and connections, the least amount the better. And just allow, allow for extra time for everything. You know, going to uh, an international flight, don't, you need at least three hours before your flight to, to be there. There's just the volume of people that are traveling right now. It takes a lot of time to get through um, CATSA and all that stuff. And remember, you know, your, your, bat, your requirements of how, many, how much liquid you're allowed to bring in your carry-on, nothing more than 100 mils, all that kind of stuff. Try to do your best to, to pack um, the way they'd like to see you pack with carry-on. And, you know, think about next time you're planning a trip, whether you want to engage a travel professional. We, we're all passionate about travel. Like, I, I mean, offer me to stand up and talk about travel anytime. I love it, right? <laughs> you can probably tell. We, that's what we do. And so you get that when you work with somebody. And we've got the experience. If there's a destination that I'm not familiar with, I have 10 or 12 colleagues that, that I can talk to and and get information from them, and we, sh we share. That's the nice thing about TPI. We have um, an internal Facebook group, and we're always on sharing tidbits of information. So it, it feels like a family that we're, we're working with. Um, just ensure that uh, you've got the proper travel insurance. And um, yeah, it's working with somebody just offers you peace of mind. This is your well-deserved holiday. so. Go in it with, you know, being prepared and, and have everything planned and you'll have a great experience. So I do offer free consultation um, and I talk about how I work with my clients in my business and I have a management and planning um, fee structure that I share with you at that time and it sort of breaks down the different types of travel and what I offer, what my deliverables are to you. And if you want any references, I've got loads of references. I've, I've worked, I think I've, the count's up to like 650 clients now. Um, and a lot of repeat and a lot of referral business. So, um, yes? Oh, you're one of them. <laughs> you're one of them, two of them. There's a few of you in here, actually. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, I don't know. What else do I have to say? Oh yeah, so my niche. Well, these are a couple of pictures of things we've done in the past. I've done a few river cruises in Europe, taken a few groups from Budapest to Prague. Um, we did the Rhine. Um, the, uh, we, I, that was a cycling trip that we did when we were river cruising on the Rhine, 28 kilometer bike ride, which was fantastic. Um, Mark and I hiked in the Lake District in the UK, and below that is um, the Langlochen Canal in Wales. It's a narrow boat, and it's a 72-foot long narrow boat that we 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 operated ourselves. There was Mark's uh, cousin and their family and our kids, and we went for four days. It was a lot of fun. That was on an aqueduct, and the drop on the other side was 300 feet down. And below there on the left is a villa that we rented on the island of Var in Croatia. It was a beautiful little island and we, we uh, booked it with a, a family that we had met two years previous in Corsica. They were from Norway, we were from Canada, we just decided to travel again together and that's where we ended up. Yeah, that's Cinque Terre in Italy, that's Portugal on the left hand side. Down below is the Turkish Gulet, where we took two groups to in the fall, which was fantastic. 14 passengers and five crew, and we just cruised the Turkish coastline. Enough room to dance and play some mean charades. Uh, yeah, there's, there's Portugal again on the right, and of course Ireland at the Guinness factory. Yeah, so takeaways are do your research, consider engaging a professional, project, plan, prepare, understand the risks and do your best to mitigate them, and go with the flow and have fun. Have a great time wherever you're going to go. 
Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Yeah. I, I always leave them in, in the, you know, the little foil metal packages that they come in? I take a few of those out and I leave them in those. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to carry the box. No, as long as it's in some kind of packaging, you'll be fine. Yeah, it's more, sur more prescription meds, right, that don't really have anything other than what's on the bottle. Yeah. Any other questions? Yep. And my female well, sometimes you'll hear them say they'll start offering money. I, I, always, I always suggest to people to book your seats in advance. I always suggest you def definitely check in in advance. Don't not check in. Um, but often there'll be, there'll be some people on standby lists or there'll be crew that are, that are trying to get on because when crews fly uh, to certain places, they, they fly standby to get back to their home base. And so they'll be the first ones to be kicked off. Yes, yes, you, you should be, you should be, you should be, I've, there are some cases where you could be yeah. bumped. I'm not going to look at the date and confirm when I arrive as Yeah, yeah, you should be, um, and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, Cheryl. Oh, they do. Oh, really? Okay, okay. That's good to know. She said um, that if you're traveling with walking poles, collapsible walking poles, to put them in your checked luggage. Don't put them in your carry-on, because they won't let them on. I guess they could be a weapon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. And what they will do sometimes if the plane is just really, really full, you'll hear them make an announcement saying, you know, come, if you could come and check your bag, do a sky check, meaning you walk it to the gate and then they take it right from there and they put it on the aircraft. Yeah. If they're really full, they'll ask for that. Yep. Yeah, you, you should always have your meds on you, you know. Keep it in your purse or on your, your carry-on bag. Yes. Well, if it does, it, if it is, if they say to you, we need to remove that, you can say, I need to just take my medication out. Yeah. And take it out. Yep. Yeah. When you have a list of medications, you get from the that's not enough? No, I can't hear you through the mask, Bob. Sorry. Yeah. That you keep in your wallet anyway. Yeah. I mean, I, I take so much medication that it's going to take a separate pack to put them all in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, they're just, they advise you to keep it in, if it's prescription, to keep it in the prescription bottle. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the blister, yeah, blister packs can be labeled with your name on it, so that's another way to do it. No, they don't charge. So the question, what Cheryl said was that the pharmacy here is assembling blister packs for your prescription meds, which have, has your name on them. So that's another option. Okay. Any other questions? Yes? Two vaccinations is fully vaccinated. No, no, no. And I'm, I'm still suggesting to people to keep the, their proof of vaccination on your phone. Just keep it somewhere just in case something happens in the world and you need to show it. Yep. That's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, for sure. Yes, Nancy. Oh yeah, yeah. Just don't get caught up in a whole bunch of things and miss the ship when it leaves the port. <laughs> the, sh the, the ship isn't gonna wait for you, Nancy. <laughs> this is true. It's hey, I've seen it. I've been on a river cruise and some people didn't make it back. <laughs> they go without you. Okay, well, thank you. thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out. Yeah, thanks. Oh, I have one more thing. So I have a newsletter that I send out, and I'm horrible at sending it out. I send it out maybe three times a year. If you want to be on my newsletter list, I have a sign-up sheet here. You're welcome to give me your email address and... Yeah, and I have business cards too if you want them. <laughs>